On Friday, December 4th, NDSU students and local community members took to the streets to protest NDSU administration's response to a racist group chat formed by students. As the march concluded, NDSU students spoke about their own feelings on the administration's response, as well as the racial climate at NDSU. You have to work four times as hard to get a fourth of the recognition. We're tired. We are so tired. You can create all of the groups, clubs, boards that you want, but unless we discipline the racism at NDSU, it's going to continue. For me and for other people here like me today, my skin color follows me every second of every day. It follows me into the job interviews. It drives with me down the street. And it follows me in the grocery store. I found it interesting, he said, our hands are bound as a university, as a public institution. And I asked him, and I posed this question to every single administrator that is here today, and I posed this question to every single person that is here today. How will you fight to unchain your hands as my ancestors fought to unchange themselves? on this campus, I have experienced my own version of this criticism and this discrimination. I have never gotten in trouble for anything in my life on this campus, not with the law, not with the school, not with the academics. But the minute that a white girl sits and makes up a story about me with no proof, with no pictures, with no evidence, I am treated like a thug and a criminal and I am convicted before I could even speak. Before I could even speak. I walked into a room and was told that I could be expelled for something that I had no proof of committing. But you see pictures of this group chat, you see the proof, you see the people, and you tell them to change the name? Okay. Do you understand how disrespectful that is? To me, I could have been expelled for something I didn't even do. And they're still walking this campus freely on something that we know they did. That is the difference on this campus, and that's what I want you all to recognize right now. So we want you to know that we will not tolerate racism. I don't attend this school, but I will not tolerate racism. So we're not going to stop, we're not going to give up because Black Lives Matter! NDSU President Dean Bershani also spoke at the event after being encouraged to speak by protesters. I wish the students who shared such vulgar, inexcusable attitudes and languages could be here to understand the pain they have caused, to understand the dismissive and divisive environment they have created, to understand the irreversible nature of the damage they have done to our university community. Again, I came to listen I know you came to and I came to hear. The question is, what are we going That's to do about it? Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! You make the change! You make it! You're the president! What we are seeing now is excuses, comfortability with racism, and complacency with what to do with racist actions. What the president said was what those students did made us look bad, made our school look bad. I could bring up 75 people from the audience and they could all tell you an experience that was similar to this one, but didn't make media platforms. This is not anything new. The patterns are here. The patterns are continuing. The complacency with racism is continuing. It's one thing to be tired. It's one thing to be disappointed, but it's another thing to become numb because this happens so much, it's routine. 
I am tired of making excuses for why the school that I go to doesn't protect black students, doesn't protect indigenous students, doesn't protect our trans students. It is a mockery to be a land grant institution, a student focused institution when the students are not the core focus.